Hello, everyone. Welcome to Film Book. My name is Doug Hess, and I'm going to be your host of this edition of Film Book, where we're going to be review, reviewing the movie Aladdin, starring Will Smith, um, that was released in 2019. I also um, have a podcast called The Complete Works, where every week we're looking at a different um, um, film from a movie actor, actress, director, composers, film history, and what we're doing is going through, just like we say, the complete works, one episode, or one movie at a time, one episode at a time, and reviewing um, their films. But today we're talking about the movie Aladdin, like I said, that was released in 2019. As I always like to do, is I always like to start off with a little bit of trivia, some information about the film. Um, <clears throat> we'll also talk a little bit about uh, how much of the movie has grossed to date. We'll jump in a little bit about um, what the movie is, uh, what my thoughts were, compared to what some of the critics were saying as well, and um, just kind of give you a nice overview of the movie Aladdin, again, starring Will Smith. Now, some of you uh, might recall that uh, Aladdin um, was also a cartoon uh, that was released back in 1992, starring uh, Robin Williams. This is a live action um, uh, production. Both of those films were uh, released by Disney, but this was a, this one in 2019 starring Will Smith is a, a musical f uh, fantasy film that was produced by uh, Walt Disney Pictures. It was directed by Richie, a uh, guy Richie, who also co-wrote the screenplay with John August. Um, but like I said, before we get into the details of the film, let's go uh, ahead and jump into some of the trivia that um, hopefully the audience, uh, listeners will find interesting uh, as much as I did in terms of this. So there was a lot of trivia that I was able to uh, uh, dig up, do some research on. I'm not going to be able to go through all of it because I've got uh, approximately 12 pages of notes here. And... Um, just in the interest of time, I just want to hit some uh, uh, several of the highlights. I'll get to as many as I can and try to give you some of um, the backstory on some things as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, in the Friend Like Me number, so like I said, it was a musical. So in the Friend Like Me number, the carpet does the uh, Carlton dance, which was from which is from Will Smith's comedy, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air that ran in the 1990s. So the carpet does a little tribute to um, the comedy, The Fresh Prince of, of Bel-Air. Uh, during a Whole New World um, song, the carpet flies over the pride lands of the Lion King, which was also in 2019, which is another um, that was first an animation, and then they turned it into a live action uh, movie as well, in terms of that. Uh, let's see here, Sir Patrick Stewart campaigned for the role of Jafar. He had previously turned down the role of Aladdin back in 1992, and he has regretted it ever since. So he was actively campaigning to be in the 19, or excuse me, the 2019 version, live action version. Um, let's see here, during the scene when Aladdin asked Genie to make a uh, prince, the Genie produces an actual prince in the background. The prince is dressed in colors of pink and lime green, which is the same colors in the title logo, uh, which is another nod to Will Smith's comedy, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So the genie created the fresh prince for Aladdin. So the genie is Will Smith. And again, that was a tribute back to um, a sitcom that, that ran in the 1990s called The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Bel Bel excuse me. If um, any of the audience members are, are not uh, recalling what the Fresh Prince of uh, Bel, Bel Air, excuse me, I don't know why that's so hard for me to, to, to talk to today in terms of that. Now, one thing that I thought was very interesting, um, and one of the concerns I had about whether or not I even wanted to, to watch the movie or was uh, top of my list, is that Will Smith said that he was really terrified uh, while playing the character of the genie, but that he found a lane that pays homage to Robin Williams' performance in the original film, 
uh, while still making the role his very own. And I think this is very interesting because, um, like I said earlier, when we first started the podcast, that um, Robin Williams is uh, the original genie, if you will, in the 1992 version of Aladdin. And, and Will Smith, and rightfully so, and, and I've asked some other people as well, they would agree with this, that it was kind of hard at, to, to go up against um, Robin Williams because he's so funny. And a lot of the things that I've read is that he would just ad lib, go off script, and then they would have to go back in and um, take some of that and put it back in the movie and, and have to uh, rework it in order to to have it fit uh, with the film, which w- 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 obviously is uh, comedy genius, uh, especially when you're talking about ro- the late Robin Williams. But I could see where Will Smith was a little terrified um, in this film. And I'll go into this in a little bit more detail later on. But one thing that um, I thought was uh, very interesting and I think plays well for Will Smith is the fact that he didn't try to compete or make the genie um, another um, version of Robin Williams. So he kept it fresh, but also was able to pay respect um, to a legend, uh, somebody like Robin Williams. So I could see where he was terrified um, in terms of that. So uh, very well. Um, let's see here. So on the Prince, um, the song, the Prince, um, all, uh, some of the lyrics, um, refer to Sunday Salam. Hope I'm saying that correctly. I mean, no disrespect if I, if I mispronounce it and it was changed over to Friday Salam. This is an actual, actual accurate as a holy day for Muslim is Friday and not Sunday, so they were trying to get it very uh, as much uh, accurate as they very as they could. So changing the the words from Sunday to Friday, trying to make it um, a little bit more realistic and st- uh, sticking with the Muslim um, religion or holy day, if, if you will. Um, will Smith also recorded friend like. Me on the very first day that he met with the composers, uh, which is a little odd, uh, which is great. It's just not typically the way things are done. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting in, in terms of that. Now, Guy Ritchie uh, chose Will Smith to be the genie because he believed Smith could give a performance as good as the late Robin Williams, but not similar. And again, this is going to be a theme that, that you uh, you hear throughout the um, the. Um, the podcast, if you will, um, just to flavor the character would be different enough and unique enough that it would be a different lane versus trying to compete. And that was a direct cl- quote from Guy Ritchie, um, who was um, one of uh, the writers and also the directors uh, of the movie Aladdin in terms of that. Um, let's see here. Like I said, there's a lot of information here that I'm not going to be able to go through all of it, but I want to hit some of the, of the highlights. Uh, Will Smith based his role as, as the genie on his 1990s role of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. There has been a lot of that hip-hop flavor in Disney history. Excuse me. So I think it stand out as unique even in the Disney world, uh, which was a quote from uh, Will Smith regarding uh, his take on Um, how to play the genie. Uh, Something I thought was very interesting was Jim Carrey was originally chosen for the genie, but at the time he was involved in a much publicized lawsuit, so he couldn't commit to any long-term work at the time. And so now going from Jim Carrey over to uh, Will Smith, I thought that was really interesting um, because I would assume we would categorize Jim Carrey as... uh, in the same category as Robin Williams in terms of, of funny, where I think, I personally think of Will Smith as less of a um, comedy um, actor and more of a, a, a drama. Not that Will Smith cannot do comedy because uh, he very much can, but I just thought that was a kind of an interesting take on things. So um, in terms of that, uh 
So um, <clears throat> Aladdin is a male given Arabic name, which means uh, nobility of faith or nobility of creed slash religion. So give you a little identification of what uh, Aladdin means in terms of that. Uh, let's see here. There was rumors that uh, Gilbert uh, Godfrey would be reprising his role as a lingo from the original franchise. However, it was later confirmed that Alan Tutki would take up the role to the disappointment of many fans. Uh, Gilbert Godfrey, if you remember, uh, was the talking bird uh, for the 92 version of Aladdin. And uh, that would have been great to have him come back, I believe, uh, and reprise that role as well. But um, unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Um, the name Jasmine um, comes from the Persian word, and I'm probably not going to mispronounce this, Yasmin. The Persian word Yasmin, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, which means a gift from God in terms of that. So interesting. Um, this is Alan Tusky's eighth Disney film. Um, he was in, let's see here, Wreck It Ralph, 2012, Frozen, 2013. Uh, he played the Duke of Weston. He was in Big Hero 6, uh, which was back in 2014. Uh, 2016, he was also in Zupia. Um, and he was also in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, and Ra Ralph Breaks the Internet 2018. Uh, he was in that as well. It's also his fourth one as a villain and second as a bird, um, which is really interesting for this next uh, bit of trivia that I didn't know. I was actually kind of surprised, but this was Will S Smith's first Disney movie. Um, to be honest with you, I would have guessed that uh, he had already been in a Disney movie, but um, to my surprise, he wasn't. Or this was his first. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, some of the production um, designers drew their inspiration from a Morocco, um, a Persian, and the Turkish cultures. Um, they also had Victoria paintings um, that was uh, giving them inspiration uh, in the film as well. In the scene where Aladdin is sneaking into the palace, he mimics moves that are made in the original video game Prince of Persia uh, that was out there. Um, Will Smith was also offered to play um, um, a role in Dumbo, but decided to star in Aladdin instead. This makes him uh, the second actor to choose a live-action remake of a Disney Renaissance film over a live script uh, ab abduction of a Walt Disney animation movie. In terms of that, um, oh, and th this live-action uh, remake of Aladdin uh, gives more detailed information about Jaf Jafar's obscure past. Um, ch -ch 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 the name of the princess, princess in the original Arab tale of Aladdin and the Magic Lamp is Badaradrum. Hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not, but it was Badarabajur. I apologize. I know I'm mispronouncing that, uh, so I apologize. Uh, this is Walt Disney Pictures' fifth live action remake um, out there. Let's see here. A lot, lot, lot of trivia, like I said, just a lot of trivia. Um, and it's hard to pick and choose what uh, I want to share in the interest of time. Um, pro wrestler and WWE superstar uh, Mustafa Al Adi Alam. Campaign to play the Aladdin. Um, Tom Hardy was rumored uh, for the role of Jafar, but this caused another outcry 
uh, on the ongoing debate among viewers about Hollywood, Hollywood's perceived whitewashing practices. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, the last Disney live-action film to feature the short closing 2011 logo at the end. Uh, like I said, just a lot of information out here. Um, that um, uh, It was released on Blu-ray and DVD on the 51st birthday of the film's director, Guy Ritchie. Um... Both this film and the original animated film released uh, the same year as animated film from 20th Century Fox that stars the actor who played the genie. Uh, the original 92, 1992 animated film released the same year as Fern Gull, The Last Rainforest uh, in 92, which had Robin Williams voicing um, Batty Coda, uh, while the 2019 live action um, reboot released the same year as Spies in Disguise, which had Will Smith voicing Lance Sterling. Okay. WWE Hall of Fame Burt Hart uh, played the genie in 2004 in the stage version of Aladdin in Canada. Uh, he contacted Disney when they announced the live action version. Encouraged him to cast reality TV superstar Stephen John um, Astin to play Aladdin, as Hart felt he would have been perfect um, in the phone in the film. Okay. Uh, while the original film was released two years before the original Lion King film, this film was released only two months before the 2019 version. So. Uh, both Lion King and Aladdin and, and um, Aladdin in 1992 uh, was released two years before Lion King Animations, which was released in 94. But in uh, 2019, they were only, instead of two years, they were only two months apart uh, from, from the release in terms of that. Um, maybe a couple more here. Um, like I said, just a lot of information here. Um, oh, uh, the genie and his family, uh, live on a lamp shaped boat. So the boat represents the genie's own wish for freedom and to go anywhere he wishes. And it shapes represents his previous, uh, residence in terms of that. So, like I said, just a lot of information when it comes to Aladdin, uh, tons of information. A lot of it I didn't even get to just, um, uh, again, some of it's in the interest of time. Others is that I, I, I don't want to just overwhelm and only have uh, trivia. But to get into uh, some of the other uh, aspects of the film and um, kind of go from there. Okay. So um, how did it do at the box office? It actually did quite well. Um, to date, it has uh, reached over a billion dollars. It had a budget of uh, $183 million. And at the box office, uh, so far, it's made over uh, $1 billion worldwide um, out there. On May the 24th of 2019 is when it was released here in the United States. And like I said, it was directed by Guy Ritchie. And screenplay uh, was written by John August and Guy Ritchie um, in terms of that. So it's, it's based on the book, Aladdin and the Magic Lamp. From 1001 Nights. Um, it's starring Will Smith, Mina Mazdo, uh, Ni Ni Naomi Scott, uh, Marwan Kinzar. Um, again, I hope that I'm uh, pronouncing those names correctly. It was uh, distributed by uh, Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. Um, what is interesting, um, a lot of folks believe that there could be a sequel uh, in the making, a uh, possible um, sequel out there. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of got mixed feelings on that, but we'll talk a little bit that at the end. 
Um, but before we get to any possible sequels, let me kind of give you a, a quick um, overview of the movie, and um, then I'll give you my, my opinions on it. So Aladdin is a kind-hearted street um, hustler living in an Arab uh, city, um, along with his pup, best pup with his pet monkey. And so he rescues and befriends a prince, Jasmine, who has snuck out of the palace to explore because she's tired of the sheltered life. Um, meanwhile, the the villain uh, in the movie, uh, Jafar, schemes to overthrow Jasmine's uh, father as, as the king uh, in, in charge of the kingdom. And so... Um, uh, Jafar is a, um, a wizard, I guess you could say, uh, or a counselor, um, to the king. And so he is trying to scheme and, and overthrow cause he wants the power uh, for himself. He, along with his pet parrot sidekick, uh, Igor seeks a magic lamp that is hidden in the, the cave of wonders that will grant them three wishes. Him. So Aladdin is captured. Jafar uh, persuades him to then go after and retrieve the lamp in terms of that. So once he goes inside the cave, the Cave of Wonders, um, where the lamp is, uh, Aladdin finds a magic carpet and obtains the lamp um, in the process. He gives it to Jafar, who double crosses him, throws him back into the cave, although Abdul ste steals the lamp back, and Abdul is the again the pet monkey. So he goes into the cave, and instead of giving it to Jafar, the monkey steals the the lamp back. And so um, Aladdin Jaf and the Abu, who is the um, the monkey, are in this cave of wonders, but they have the lamp. Okay, so here they are. They're trapped in the lamp. So what does Aladdin do? He's got this magic lamp. So absolutely, he's going to rub it. So he rubs the lamp, and uh, unbeknownst to him, he summons um, a genie who lives inside of it. As you can imagine, the, the genie is Will Smith. And the genie explains that he has the power to, to grant Aladdin three wishes. Okay, So Aladdin then tricks the genie into freeing him from the cave without even making a wish. And that's how they kind of get out of the cave. After they get out of the cave, the genie advises Aladdin to be very specific with his wishes, um, making sure that that he's careful with those wishes because they have consequences, and that when he makes uh, some of these wishes. Um, we never know what some of the effects might be. So making sure that uh, nothing comes back and, and backfires on um, Aladdin. So Aladdin uses his first official wish to become a prince so he can um, obviously impress uh, Jasmine, who is the princess. And he promises then to use the third and last wish to free the genie. Okay. Uh, Aladdin then enters um, into the city as Prince Al, uh, arriving in just fabulous faction. Um, however, Jasmine um, is unimpressed with this first uh, presentation, including an assortment of gifts and gems that was uh, being presented to her. Uh, the two later bond when it takes um, her on a ride on this magic carpet, showing her all over the city, and she sees while well, um, she, she wants to be able to see the world, and Aladdin wants to be able to uh, see, let her see the world, um, while the genie goes out with Jasmine's um, handmaiden um, at the time. So when um, Jasmine tricks Aladdin into revealing his uh, true identity, he convinces her that he is actually a prince and only dressed like a peasant to meet the citizens, kind of doing a reverse um, on what Jasmine had done. 
So then uh, Jafar, remember Jafar, he's the um, evil wizard. Uh, probably the best way I can describe it. He discovers Aladdin's identity as two, and he wants to put his test into a theory, and he throws Aladdin into the sea. Uh, Aladdin loses consciousness, uh, and awakes, having been saved by the genie at the cost of his second wish. So now he's down to two, um, down to one wish. He, the first one, remember, he wanted to uh, impress the princess, so he makes himself into a prince. The second one, um, he's thrown into the sea, and the genie has to recover him using his second wish. Uh, they then expose Jafar for who he is. He gets arrested and placed in a dungeon. Um, and so, so the Sutan offers Aladdin the position of heir to the throne. Fearing he will lose Jasmine if the truth is revealed, Aladdin needs genie with, with him now to refuse to free him on that third promise with the genie, uh, that he had promised that the genie. So he kind of goes back on to his word of um, his promise. Um, so what happens is the parrot then uh, snatches one of the guards' keys. He's going to free Jafar. Uh, you knew Jafar couldn't stay in prison forever. And Jafar suddenly steals a lamp back from Aladdin. And now the genie is the new master to Jafar. Um, he uses his first two wishes, um, Jafar does, uh, to become... Um, yeah, um, he uses his uh, first two wishes to become Sutan, and then when the guards refuse to acknowledge um, the change at Jasmine's request to become the world's most powerful sorcerer, imprisoning the guards and Jasmine, Pat Tiger, Rajar, he then exposes Aladdin's identity to Jasmine and ex 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 except can't even talk today, folks. I apologize. He basically sends him out into exile and um, out to the frozen wastelands. He threatens to kill Sutan, which is a king, um, and Dala, unless she agrees to marry him. At the wedding ceremony, Aladdin and Abu return, having been rescued by the magic carpet, and Jasmine steals back the lamp. As you can imagine, Jafar is uh, terrified and transforms um, the pet uh, parrot into a rock to give chase and, and overpowers them. Okay, so Aladdin then um, stalls by taunting Jafar for being second only to the genie in terms of raw power, thereby tricking him into using his last wish to become the most powerful being in the universe. Due to the uh, Vagueness of the wish, the genie is able to use it to turn Jafar into the genie, which then puts him back into uh, the lamp and, in a sense, freeing the genie. So, um, at the end, um, Aladdin is then able to grant, um, grant the genie the wish that would have been his third wish at the very end and allowing him to be free. Um, in the process. Okay, so the genie gets married to Dalau and leaves to explore the world and starts a family with her. And as you can imagine, Aladdin and Jasmine get married and start a new life together as well um, in terms of that. So um, that was kind of a quick, <clears throat> excuse me, a quick version of Aladdin. <clears throat> I apologize. That was a quick version of Aladdin, uh, the 2019 version um, out there. Um, like I said, overall, I thought it was a, it was a good movie. Does it? Um, this is where I get a little. Um, oh, um, what's the word? I'm, I, 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 I don't. I, I don't want to say I'm concerned I, um, or puzzled or anything like that. Is Back in 1992, obviously, I saw the original uh, starring Robin Williams and really enjoyed that. And it was hard to keep that out, get that out of my mind and trying to compare it to 2019, having Will Smith in there. And I can see where Will Smith became very nervous about trying to um, live up to um, 
Will, Robin Williams. I, th in trying to be very honest in keeping things separate, I thought Will Smith did an excellent job, uh, and and I believe a lot of people who saw the movie um, will probably remember Robin Williams' performance, and was probably doing a little bit of what I was doing, or maybe even a lot of what I was doing, and that was trying to compare Will Smith to Robin Williams. I think that was unfair to to Will Smith. He uh, was kind of hinted. Uh, somewhat of an impossible task in that regard. And so with all due respect to, to Will Smith, I thought he did a fabulous job. Um, and he did a really great job of making it his own, staying in his own lane. Uh, so he wasn't quote unquote competing against uh, the late uh, uh, comic genius, uh, Robin Williams. So in, in terms of that, so I would say that, Will Smith did a uh, wonderful job. Now, I was looking at some of the um, uh, reviews, scores. Rotten Tomato had um, Aladdin at 57%. Um, almost 60%. My personal take on that is I think it was probably a little bit better movie than what a lot of the um, critics were saying you know, with Rotten Tomato. And I think... Again, I think it's because they were comparing it to the 1992 version. And so for myself, I'm going to bump it up instead of uh, 57 or, or say 60% in all fairness. I'm going to say it was probably a seven, seven and a half performance um, because I'm probably as guilty as the next guy uh, with my biases in there. So I want to, to try to take that out as much as I can, add a little bit to it. And that's why I'm going to go, say, a seven, seven and a half in terms of that. Um, I wasn't um, overly thrilled when I first heard that this was going to be a live action. But again, I think Disney uh, does a wonderful job um, of turning what is primarily uh, what they're really good at is the animation and turning it into a live action. I was impressed and... You know, like I said, I, I was really nervous when they were doing Beauty and the Beast and, and the Jungle Book and um, the Lion King. And I thought, Aladdin, oh, how are they going to do this? But I believe they did it very well, very tastefully. And, and again, try not to compare it to um, the 92 version of the film uh, overall. So, again, Will Smith... Uh, does a great job. I thought uh, Walt Disney does a great job of bringing this to a, a live action. Um, again, it's musical uh, fantasy film. I'm usually not a big uh, musical guy. Uh, but again, I thought Walt Disney does just enough, just right touch, that they did very well on this in, in, in terms of bringing uh, the, the music as well. Um, a couple other things. Um like I said, the box office, it started off really strong. It's made over a, a, um, a billion dollars um, as, no, that's worldwide. <clears throat> as of October the 6th, that was kind of the, the latest I could get on, on some data. Of 2009, uh, Aladdin had grossed around 355.5 million in the United States and Canada and 694.8 million in other territories. And that's why it's um, topped over the billion dollar mark um, against a production budget, uh, like I said earlier, of uh, approximately $183 million. So um, the film crossed the billion dollar mark on July the 26, 2019, becoming the 41st film ever to reach that milestone. So not a lot of films reach the billion dollar mark. And only 41 of them, and Aladdin is the 41, 41st um, in terms of that. Okay. Uh, worldwide, the film uh, was expected to open uh, to an additional 100 to 120 uh, million, including 10 to 20 million in China. It went on to gross 123.2 million from foreign territories in its three day opening weekend for an overall global debut of around $214.7 million. It was the number one film in every Latin American and Asian territory where it was released. Its biggest international opening uh, were in China, which 18.7, Mexico 9.2, 
and then in the United Kingdom, 8.4, Italy, 6.6 .6 million, South Korea, 6.5 million. Uh, it also won the second best opening of 2019 in Italy, Spain, Indonesia, and Vietnam. Okay. So just kind of give you a, a quick uh, background of what it did at the box office um, in terms of that. Like I said, a lot of the critics overall um, was giving it about a, um, a 57. Um, um, the site, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, some of the, the comments said Aladdin retells its classic source material story with significant specular spectacular and skill even if it never approaches the dazzle uh splendor of the animated original um again i think that was a little harsh because they were going up and when you add robin williams into the mix that's why it was hard to go up against it that's my personal opinion others may disagree with that uh but that's that's my opinion on that so overall i would give the film um a seven and a half, I believe that, um, like I said, overall it it, it does um, hit the mark, give the gives the audience what it wants, um, and does a really good job of telling a story that was based on a book, but also, a, if you will, a remake from an animated version back in 1992. Okay, so we'd love to hear um, from you. We'd love to hear what your thoughts were on. On Aladdin um, as well, so we would encourage you to uh, to go out there on uh, and post your thoughts of what you thought of the movie Aladdin that was released uh, in 2019. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and select the bell icon so you are notified when we publish new reviews. You can find more of my work on film dash book.com again that's film-book.com just search for doug hess or on twitter at hess doug 14 at hess doug 14 um, is my um, twitter address i also host the complete works podcast on itunes and spotify and you'll find those links below in the subscription as well as a link to our um, home page until next time thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the movie Aladdin as much as I did. See you around.